Charlie Dalen and Apivia are the leading Emoka yacht combination, with the next Bondi Arctic race starting on June 12. This is his schedule for 2022. Aujourd'hui, on a fait l'équivalent de deux tours du monde avec le bateau. Je le connais par cœur. On a fait encore plus progresser à Pivia avec des foils encore plus performants. Et on a mis toutes les chances de notre côté pour faire le mieux possible. Voilà, C'est un projet qui est tourné vers la performance, vers le sportif. Gros objectif de l'année, ça sera bien sûr euh, la route du Rhum. This is the weekly sailing world on water, June 10th, 2022. Here are highlights of the best in sailing last week. The Giorgio Armani Superyacht Regatta Day 1 showcased the fabulous fleet of yachts assembled by the yacht club Costa Smeralda. As a preview to what is set to be a wonderful week of sailing in Sardinia, the two classic schooners, Marriott of 1915 and Shenandoah of Sark, Put on a splendid show on the water. The 15th edition of the event officially opens the YCCS sporting calendar, as well as the Mediterranean superyacht sailing season. 18 boats are enrolled, ready to sail in and around the islands of the La Maddalena archipelago. The 2022 Rolex Giralia race will return to its original format consisting of the San Remo Saint Tropez leg, three days of coastal races, and windward leeward in French waters, followed by the start of the long race, scheduled for Wednesday, the 15th of June. A 241 nautical mile course starting from Saint Tropez, rounding the Giralia rock and finishing in Genoa. The Giralia is absolutely spectacular. It's got a slightly mystic feel to it. To win the race, you need to be perfect in everything. There's no compromise. You have to be focused all the time. It is the most prestigious race, I think, in the Mediterranean. Passion, tradition, and a respect for continuity. Values which have always typified the Rolex Chiralia. In mid-June, this famous fixture in Mediterranean sailing returns with its three-day inshore series followed by the renowned 241 nautical mile offshore race. For the first time in three years, the event organized by the Yacht Club Italiano, in collaboration with the Societe Nautique de Saint-Tropez, will again see Saint-Tropez take center stage. The picturesque town of France's Côte d'Azur is much loved by sailors, in part due to its rich nautical heritage. For nearly 70 years, the Rolex Urania offshore race has provided a platform for Corinthian sailors to test themselves against elite professional crews. Following the Saint-Tropez send-off, 
the fleet races to La Formigue turning mark and then to the iconic Giralia Rock off the northern tip of Corsica, the undeniable symbol and alluring reference point for the entire race. From here, as fatigue often sets in, comes a testing leg to the finish off the illustrious port of Genoa. In recent years, around 200 diverse entries from over 20 nations have been attracted by the charms and challenges this race can offer. For the front runners, the race record of just under 15 hours set a decade ago will be an enticing target. The main prize of overall victory is decided on handicap, where preparation, teamwork, skill and dedication are fundamental to success. The 69th Rolex Giralia Offshore Race commences on the 15th of June. Last week, we had coverage of the Abanca 52 Super Series, Biana Sailing Week. To conclude our coverage, here is their wrap-up video. As the 52 Super Series starts its 10th anniversary season of five regattas, the fleet makes its first ever pilgrimage to the far northwest of Spain and to the rugged Atlantic coast of Galicia, to beautiful Bayona for the Abanca 52 Super Series Bayona Sailing Week. Ashore, it's a historic, proud club. The Monte Real Club Yates de Bayona are passionate hosts who have worked long and hard to bring the world's leading Grand Prix monohull circuit to a renowned club, which has three times challenged for the America's Cup and hosted many world and international championships. Yo creo que el hecho de haber sido en tres ocasiones desafiantes de la Copa América ha puesto el club en el circuito internacional. Hemos organizado ocho mundiales y tenemos para el año 2023 el noveno mundial que vamos a organizar. Quiero agradecer a las series TP52 el que nos hayan escogido para estar presentes en ese circuito. Es un compromiso adquirido con los socios de volver a situar al club en los circuitos internacionales. On the water, the Ria de Vigo is a challenging race arena, bordered by islands upwind, the wind it bends and swings, and offers a whole new set of challenges embraced by the afterguards. The nine teams, representing six different nations, arrive fully primed. Over half have trained in March in Valencia, and among the changes on board the different teams, Ed Baird joins the Interlodge team, Gladiator and Prevetsa have made crew changes in their lineups, three boats have new keel fins, their Phoenix, Quantum Racing and Allegra, Doyle Sails entered the fray with Platoon and Interlodge, while Vayu, the Whitcraft's team from Trinidad, and Gladiator both moved to Quantum Sales. This corner of the Atlantic coast is well known for its changeable weather, but Galicia turns on the sunshine and the crews quickly fall in love with Bayona and Galicia. Breezes are light on the first day of racing. The Platner family's Phoenix team finish on top of the table. Tom Slingsby and Cameron Dunn working well to decipher the new race area and scoring a big win in the first race. Platoon triumph in the second, but really the day belongs to the Thai crew on Vayu. Largely amateur, they posted two second places to share the lead. Amazing day and uh, yeah, just like a great kind of day sailing and so good for the team. True gentlemen always come second. On the second day, Quantum Racing hit their stride, with owner-driver Doug DeVos steering to a victory in 18 knots of breeze, and the wind builds to 24 for the second race, and it's Phoenix who moved clear at the top of the table by winning the second race. The boat was going really well, loved, loved the breeze, and uh, once we got in the lead, we sort of managed to get away from everybody. We're confident in each other, that you know we're happy with our crew work and everything, so you know, right now we know that We've got three very difficult, probably light air days coming up, which in this fleet can be really tough yachting, so a long way to go. Day three is light again, and the breeze is particularly hard to read. Tony Langley's British flag team, Gladiator, tack off the committee boat end of the line, go right, and they win their first race since 2018 in Croatia. Phoenix had a tough day, scoring 14 points from the two races, while Quantum Racing stepped clear at the top of the regatta table by two points by winning the second race. So Those wonderful times where nobody's tacking on you, you're actually kind of in front and, and you can just kind of sail with the boat. The fleet and have everybody back, we had a whole season ahead of us and so it's just a joy to see everybody again. No, we just got the bananas off the boat. Actually get them off the boat, get them off the chase boat and get them off the dock. <laughs>
and on the fourth day of racing patience really is tested it's very light in the morning and there's a long wait for the breeze to fill but in six to nine knots quantum racing win the only race of the day we sail very well and Terry, Lucas and Michele did a fantastic job. Doug was very focused and we enjoy and when you enjoy this tough day, it's good. In 2022, 52 Super Series is partnering with Kick Out Plastic. This is a new initiative working across many different popular sports, embracing ambassadors who have big followings, and working together we can reach a wider, broader audience with a more powerful voice. At the same time, 52 Super Series is looking to work with more local initiatives when we go to different venues and in Bayona we visited a project where the local fishing community are working extremely hard to remove debris from the nets, it's typically plastics and metals, and these are recycled and repurposed into different products. Final day offers great conditions, 17 knots on the start line for race number 8. It's a win for Allegri but Quantum Racing come through in second and that gives them a 7 point lead into the final race. Well the final race actually starts in a 7 knot breeze. Quantum are over the start line, look to have lost the regatta. There's a big wind shift at the leeward gate and the race is abandoned and Quantum Racing win the first regatta of the season. It just feels wonderful, you know, to be back uh, on the podium again like that and up top and to, to start out the season the right way. It was a lot of preparation, a lot of great work by the team, as you can imagine. All the teams are working hard, but we're just thrilled to be able to end up on top. So the final standings for the Abanca 52 Super Series Bayono Sailing Week. Quantum Racing win on 19 points. In second are Platoon on 26 points. One point behind on 27 are Phoenix. Fourth are Interlodge on 39 and fifth Allegra 43 points. The second regatta of the 2022-52 Super Series is the Rolex TP52 World Championship in Cascais. In 2019, Cascais delivered epic conditions, big winds, big waves and action all the way through from start to finish. So join us in Cascais for the Rolex TP52 World Championship where we will see all the action. Join us live! We have the World Sailing TV's report on the Hempel World Cup Series at the Allianz Regatta, medal races. Yeah, I'm pumped. It was so tight and like all the time in the back, you know, they're like 10 meters behind me. We're going like 50 kilometers an hour faster and yeah, no, no room for mistakes. The downwind was super hard for me with the 15 compared to them, but finally I made it, so super happy. Uh, yeah.
The second day of racing at the Giorgio Armani Superyacht Regatta, an event organized by the yacht club Costa Smeralda, with the support of title sponsor Giorgio Armani, was graced with an east northeasterly breeze of 10 to 14 knots. You never know if you have the race in the back. All the teams are uh, really, really good, and uh, all the boats are fantastic. So you are racing on on time, and you know that any little mistake may cost you more than you would think. So it's always hard until the end. Kharkik designed the full-carbon cruiser racer NEO 570C, was launched recently in Barry. It was constructed by Paolo Semeraro of Neo Yachts and Composites, and rig was from From Hall Spars. We have done many launches, of course, up to today, and all of them in Barry, but this boat is special. It took uh, a lot of time, a lot of effort, uh, a lot of energies. I'm quite happy. The result, the boat is beautiful, and the water and the mast is on, <laughs> everything's smooth, I can say. We did it! <laughs> and uh, we were on the edge on deciding not to launch in Bari because the logistic in Bari is not prepared for to launch both the sides with this draft, but at the end we insisted and we want to give a sign to the community that uh, everything is possible. Also in the port we can make a development toward something which is uh, efficient and can attract also foreigner customers. We hope uh, in the next one or two years we can have our own base for launching and servicing inside the port. It's been a quite long journey because of, you know, the pandemic and then we had some problems with the timing but um, at the end the team was fantastic, everybody was giving 100%, 110%, so I've been very pleased to see the guys, uh, everybody happy and cheering and <laughs> it's been a nice day. Ah, the name Carbonita, of course, was chosen by the owner, but also means in Italian, little object in carbon. Yeah, with that boat in the water, uh, if everything goes well, uh, for us it's a turning point. Customer will start coming and test the boat, visiting and so on. Hopefully something will happen. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Here are highlights of the final day of the Star Sailors League Gold Cup Qualifying Series, Round 2. For the second round of the qualifying series saw an epic start. After nearly avoiding Equator, Lithuania put the pressure on the Slovenian boat, forcing them into a do or die move in order to keep their speed. Equator needs to beat Lithuania to stay in the running for the qualifications to the final series. But surprisingly, they gave it away by not forcing Lithuania to attack. After an upwind drag lag, Slovenia was still in the lead and kept that position finishing first. Ah, oh, congratulations. Lithuania 
taking second place ahead of Ecuador. Final race of the second round of the qualifying series saw a big split right from the start with Equator on the left side and both the other teams going right. This move paid for Equator as they rounded the weather mark first with a comfortable lead followed by Lithuania and Slovenia. After yesterday's mistake, which cost them the win, Ecuador was able to keep the lead and finish first. Slovenia nailed the event and qualified with Lithuania for the final series of the 2022 SSL Gold Cup. It was very dramatic, very close racing. Uh, we enjoyed it so much and obviously coming out with the win, we are <laughs> extremely happy and uh, we have a ticket for uh, Bahrain. So we are in the finals and we're looking forward to bottle with the best teams in the world. See you on the 11th and 12th of June for the next live. And don't forget the inaugural day of the SSL Gold Cup is on the 13th of June at the Olympic Museum in Lausanne, Switzerland. It's been a fabulous Giorgio Armani regatta at the yacht club Costas Marolda. Day three of the Giorgio Armani brought a breeze from the northeast for another stunning coastal race through the islands of the La Maddalena Archipelago. The most important thing is organize the crew in the morning, uh, well, organize the regattas, uh, uh, considering the, the wind condition and everything. So that, that's the way to go. This is the first regatta ever that Giorgio Armani sponsored in the sailing world. So we are very glad that they decided to do this event with us. Today we are expecting light breeze, possibly sailing and shifting conditions.